Hello, hello, welcome. You can all feel free to unmute yourselves. Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you? Good. I guess it's afternoon for you. Huh? Yeah, it's all good. You know what? I define the time of day based on how effective the caffeine is. <laughs> all right. Keeping it real, Peter, no? Yes. Uh, I, hope, I joined your chat GPT uh, for the Oakland user group. You uh -huh. got a session on chat GPT. You got on your mailing list. So this is my first. I'm going to see what it's all about. So actually, this type of event, it's not dramatically different from other kinds of live online events that I've done before. But there are a couple of new nuances that make this an inaugural kind flavor of an online event. And what I mean by that is in this event, this particular session, there is no agenda. You guys have, it's, you guys control the agenda. So this is more of an open office hours to tackle any type of Salesforce admin. It could be career related, feature related, product related type of an issue, a struggle, a problem that you guys have and to just Go with the flow with it. And so like an open, like I mentioned before, like an office hours, open Q&A type of a thing yeah. where I would recommend for any Salesforce professional to treat this like a group coaching session or a career coaching session or having free consulting hours for one hour per month. And depending on how it goes, I am planning on doing this regularly, really just to help the Salesforce community. Okay. Yeah. And I'm oh, just yeah. learning. I'm I just have been studying to get my Salesforce admin uh, credential. So okay. hopefully I have that in the next week or two and then looking for a Salesforce job. So I haven't done any yeah. actual Salesforce admin, just the studying part. Yeah. No, I get it. So Peter, let me ask you if I recall correctly from your attendance at the Oakland user group meetup, if I recall correctly, I don't have your LinkedIn profile open in front of me right now, but if I recall correctly, you yeah. had an established career that was in IT slash consulting related, something oh, IT nice. related. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. So for a software company that did um, those application, for model based also, application I'm development. Sure tell you how to it was a company called uh, Mursano. Hang on a second. Let me, the uh, there is a uh, uh, distraction coming in from one person. Let's see if I can. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, go ahead, Peter. You were saying. Yeah, I, I worked for a company called Versada. They were bought by Sterling Software, who was bought by someone else. But anyway, so we did model-based application development. So it was so our customers were banks, insurance companies. So they would use our tools to develop applications, very mm -hmm. similar to Salesforce. And so I was a development manager. I was a QA manager. So I have experience in the right. field and, and that. Yes, yeah, so those skills are all going to be critical, cr absolutely critical to transitioning into a Salesforce-related role. Yeah. 100%. Awesome. Welcome to others who have joined while we've been chatting. So for those who have not heard, this is really, this is an open Q&A, like office hours type session, like an ask me anything. It could be Salesforce project related, feature related, product related, any type of thing. It's uh, great to see a lot of familiar faces, including yours, Mark. It's great to see you. Thanks for joining. So anyone can kick this off. There is, there's no... I can talk about anything to any inanimate object. So you don't want me just waiting for <laughs> I can, but you don't want me to. So you, you can conversate with ChatGPT, just see where that goes. That too, yes. In a way, my family is not so upset that <laughs> I found this addiction on ChatGPT. Talk to the wall. I better just talk to yeah. the computer. It'll talk to like, That's between me and my therapist, okay? <laughs> Anyway, you guys can hit me up any type of, let's tackle any type of issue or challenge that you guys are, any of you are facing today and let's just unpack it. And you can feel free to protect yourselves. You can feel free to swap or swap real names for fictitious ones or be a little bit more generic without giving I'm not in trying to encourage anyone to reveal any type of confidential, personal, sensitive type information 
within the question. So it, it should be a safe zone for all of us. Yeah, I, I want to jump in first off saying uh, Absolutely. hello again to Mark, your friend. And hello to you, David, who's a friend who I've never actually had a chance to meet actually, okay, but synchronously, but I have met you through your content. So thank you. A bit out of body experience right now. <laughs> I love the content you have out there. Good to have you here, Jason. Go ahead. Hit me up. Okay. Okay. A couple of things. First, actually a plug for with all the content you have out there. Do you know any you, the tech enthusiast you are? Do you know about Snipped? Yes. I don't know if I've ever heard of it. What is it? S-N-I-P-D, Snip. So it's an app that, oh, nice. that plays podcasts, just like you normally listen to. And it's free. So that means you're the product, but that's fine. Hopefully I get ads that you um, what I listen to. And, and it, uh, it allows you to take clips of your podcasts. So if you're listening to something, I have my earbuds in, I'll double tap my left ear or my right ear to fast forward past commercials or double tap my left ear to take a clip. And it makes a clip automatically and you can have a preset for how you want the clips to be. You can also just press a button on the phone to make a clip. And then you can be able to make notes right there or tweak the clip, the length of it. And it uses AI to transcribe it as well. So it's actually funny that you mentioned this. So I've never heard of Quip before, but I have heard the name escapes me at the moment, but I have heard of another app that has a similar type of functionality and a similar goal that can also be used not only for podcasts, but also for Kindle books. Oh. And at the same time, what this other tool does, I can look it up if we have a lull, or I can look it up either now or after. But what this other tool also does is thinking bigger picture, uh, it will also synchronize to Notion, I believe yeah. many other That's tools as well. So that this way you can leverage Notion as a second brain, as like your personal knowledge base. So as you come across information, whether it's on, just on the web, reading an article, watching a YouTube video, or listening to a podcast, as you described, Jason, or reading a Kindle book, it allows you to, in some mechanism, because I haven't tried it yet uh, myself, to highlight the segment that you're, you want to think of it as safe and do similar things to what you just mentioned, which is really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. This also syncs to Notion in real time as well. Oh, look at that. So right from Notion, I can be able to use that as not only second brain, but also just as a reminder, because, you know, as you know, with training, you need to not only see it, but you need to research. A hundred percent. And you know what? Different people learn in different ways. Like for those of us who are parents, we might have heard that going to parent-teacher conferences. <laughs> for better or for worse, it might be part of an insult or a compliment. <laughs> about our own child, but it's abs it's a hundred percent true. And rolling that into our roles as Salesforce professionals, whether you are managing Salesforce projects, you're a Salesforce admin, developer, consultant, et cetera, that's actually an incredibly important piece of information that we all need to absorb in terms of our communication style. For example, we can explain to people till we're blue in the face, explain to them like the differences between context accounts and opportunities, just conceptually what they're used for. But if we're only doing it verbally, some people will completely get it, but other people won't understand it. What it's still, it's not clicking. They hear the words, they understand the words. Like we're not using too much of like technical terminology, but they just don't get it. Whereas on the flip side, if you create some kind of visualization, and the visualization does not have to involve logging into Salesforce whatsoever, but even like drawing stick figures on a whiteboard to further explain those concepts, it's a lot of times that is what breaks the barrier. And when you're managing any type of project issue, when communicating with others in any capacity, it's so important to remember. So I agree with you 100%. Yeah, recently, I, I always heard there was three types, but I recently heard of a fourth type. That is, so you have the auditory, visual, kinesthetic. Yes. Then reading. I don't know what the proper name for that would be, but that is... is 100%. Yeah, I agree 100%. And that's where, when these concepts were new to me, I felt like I already explained it in my email. What the heck is there for me to say? <laughs> where it's, I guess, it's part of my own DNA and not thinking how other people do learn in different ways. 
also for background, for those of you who don't know, I was a philosophy major and I went to law school. So being forced to not voluntarily, but being forced to consume mass amounts of information from just words, no pictures, no graphics, no visualizations of any kind, and then to synthesize it and, and present it in some way is something that for me just comes very naturally. But it took me a while to really understand the, that not everyone th processes information that way or learns things that way. And that's where a lot of times I'll use the analogy of learning how to drive a car. It's one thing to read the manual. It's another thing to watch a YouTube video showing you how to do the things that you need to drive a car. And it's an entirely different experience when you're actually sitting behind the wheel. Entirely different. And to learn how to drive a car in some ways, you need a little bit of all of the above. Like you can't just get behind the steering wheel without someone having explained things to you, shown you things beforehand. They're all different tools to build your knowledge warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to be able to yeah, have a paper and pen nearby to be able to sketch out ideas, be able to reflect journal. So write it out, journal it out is good. And because that's what I found. So I have a journal, actually, I built an app in Salesforce for journaling. And one of the prompts is what did I learn today? This way I am like forcing myself to remember, especially before I go to bed, so then I can hopefully learn even more while I'm sleeping. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm completely with you. I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to share my screen. I learned a monumental amount of communication skills from this book. And the concepts are so basic, so simple. But basically in this book, I essentially learned, let's see if they have, no, there's no visualizations in here, but let's see. Ironically. I, look, yeah, <laughs> look inside. Where it, in this book, basically, they explain how you can, with just the most simplistic stick figures, you can explain the most complex concepts to people who are not familiar with these concepts at all. And that's where a lot of times I will rely on, oh, click, stop sharing. That's where a lot of times I rely on, like, even before remote meetings, before remote working, even you know, working in, in a conference room environment with colleagues and talking about, let's say, steps in a process and the issues associated with steps in a process. I'm the one who would be very quick to grab the dry erase markers, walk over to the whiteboard and just, just start sketching it out of like, okay, here's what I heard. Am I missing something? Are there other steps in the process or it's really only these four steps that I've written out over here? And a lot of times just by having that very rudimentary stick figure visualization, it allows people to all of a sudden look at it and say, oh, no, there are about 30 other steps between the first box and the second box. We just haven't talked about any of them yet. And now we're unpacking things. And that's where, to me, this is, these are critical skills that we need to uh, em embrace and exercise when gathering information, when someone is asking us to do something, when we need to communicate back to them, here's why creating that custom homepage or custom profile or custom whatever is not necessarily the best thing. Here's why creating 30 new fields as you're requesting on the, on the task screen is not a good idea. So explaining all of these concepts, we can break a lot of those barriers just by introducing some type of visual element into the communication. Crazy how we just went from snipping podcasts to that, right? Here. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm on you. Okay. Yeah. 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 And there's two other, other books. I, I wrote that one down in my notion on my book list. Yes. And two other books that come to mind. One I've not read yet, but one I have. The Extended Mind. Have you heard of that book? No. I haven't. I want to read. I heard of this one from another cool app called Blinkist. So anyone who's interested in books, but just wants to be able to preview it, Blinkist it gives you a free book a day. You can oh, pay nice. for a subscription or it's a free book summary a day, I should say. So Blinkist is an app. They have book summaries just to be able to go in and see if you want to be able to learn more about a book or just get the cliff notes. Thank you, Mark, for posting that link in there for the back of the napkin. And Blinkist here, I'll put the link for Blinkist in there. Blinkist.com slash daily is where you can be able to see their free book. And if you have the app, you can just on the app, you see what's the free book of the day. You can read it or listen to it of the 15 minute summary. 
And I find that's a cool way. Like you can pay for the subscription of full library and they gave it a free preview of that over Black Friday. But I found that those too overwhelming. Maybe it's good if you are curious, like back of the napkin. Okay, let me check out what are the cliff notes of that. But what I also, I like about the free daily book is that it's a new book I didn't even think of. So that's where I right. found out about the extended mind. Right. I talked about these concepts of visual, of being able to help people learn through visualization or writing and using things like Notion to offload. A hundred percent. And Jason, you actually bring up another great point, which is uncovering those related, I'll call them resources that we're not yet familiar with to even know to proactively seek them out. And that's where I think all of us have gotten used to embracing or overcoming that hurdle in our personal lives or as consumers through Netflix, Amazon product recommendations. And a lot of times that's how I will find like the best next book or product that I did not even know that existed. And <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And by the way, I'll say the same for YouTube. YouTube does an amazing, YouTube, I think the YouTube algorithm knows way more about me than I know about myself because they will recommend things to me that I will often first look at the thumbnail and the title of the video thinking, why the hell would I want to? And as I'm clicking to hit play and then I'm watching the whole thing and I go down a whole other rabbit hole, like, where did that come from? So yeah, that is a great way to learn things. And to your point, following up with, I see Mark's comment about ChatGPT, that's another way to absolutely leverage ChatGPT. I'm not at all knocking the book summaries. Those are very cool. But you can also use ChatGPT to give you some insight on what are the key lessons from the following book and the following author for, let's say, someone like me. And you describe, your, give it some context for Salesforce admins, for project managers, for busy professionals, for people who are trying to learn the following skills thing. And it will, ChatGPT does an amazing job at that, especially for books that have been around for a while. Hey, David, I just, I second that. I did that as well. I was, some books I haven't read in a while, some books I own, I asked ChatGPT to summarize it for me and I can mm -hmm. summarize specific chapters and well, I had a lot of fun with that because usually I do that myself, right? I'm typing away, but it was like, wow, this is really concise. And I could, I say you can make it more or less verbose. But a hundred percent. Not a great way to get that. And by the way, it. since we were chatting about Notion, for those of you who are using Notion, many of you, I'm a huge fan of Notion. Notion has their own AI that for, it's only been out, I want to say less than a year, a couple of months off the top of my head. I was ignoring for a while and then I saw some YouTube videos of people demoing it and it's not as powerful as chat GPT, but the convenience of having not only the AI immediately accessible on whatever notion page you're on, but also it automatically has the context of the content that already exists on the page. So if, for example, you're in Notion and you're writing out your own outline summary notes of it could be a podcast episode or it could be a book, it's probably better for a book where you can then just ask the AI, well, what other key lessons am I missing that are not already listed above? And it will give it to you. And it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. Mark, you wanted to talk about some ChatGPT related stuff or maybe AI related stuff. Go ahead, open the door. Where do you want to go with it? I don't know. I just thought, but I think that was one of the conversation topics. But I guess for just curiosity, like how people have been experimenting with it and, and things like, that. like I've been well, toying around with it recently to do things like cleaning up data and things like that, for example. So if I get like a, I had a, a client recently who sent me like a very messed up CSV file and I needed to format things like dates into proper formats. So, so I just put them into chat GPT goes, can you format that this list of dates into for us in the UK, like date month year format. Uh, and I've done stuff like I was done again, format with like postal codes. So like some of the postal codes were came in, they were a bit messed up. I was like, can you format these into proper UK British postal code format? And so. 
but I've been using that kind of chat GPT for those kind of things recently, but I'm just guess curious on like how people are using it. That is powerful indeed. I'll be quiet and let other folks shine in, in terms of how they've been using chat GPT. Yeah. <laughs> with our company even some people are trying to use it in the company and then it's brought up some like ethics you know ai ethics and so we're, we don't use it right now professionally or even personally got it okay that is understandable i think a lot of companies are still trying to figure out what position they want to take on ai and Honestly, I agree with them as it relates to concerns of putting in any type of sensitive or confidential information. There's legitimate reason to hesitate. But on the flip side, and there's legitimate reasons for companies to say, for now, until we decide, the answer is no. <laughs> like until we understand ourselves what this is all about. But on the flip side, to, to the extent that you're able to use it, any AI. So from my perspective, we might be referencing ChatGPT, but the same holds true for Bard as Google's version of AI, as well as, why is the name escaping me right now? The Microsoft option that's in, is it Bing? I forget what they call it. I'm not in it. Yeah, I'm get, that's just part of like Bing's search engine now, but powered by ChatGPT through Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI. So their, their version, oh no, it's in Microsoft no, Edge. Edge. Microsoft Edge is their browser. I need to use Microsoft Edge in order to access it. But I know what second I'm going to pull it up right now. These tools are incredibly powerful. And to the extent, my personal recommendation is to the extent that you need help. And I think every sales, every Every business professional needs help when it comes to managing projects and overcoming certain obstacles. Like, how do I communicate this technical issue that's going to impact the project? How do I communicate this to business leaders who don't care about the details? They just want to know the, how this will impact the project. How do I communicate it to them in a way that they will care about? So things like that when it comes to either communication or brainstorming, brainstorming ideas or giving you a, a foundational starting point for any project, meaning you're working with business leaders trying to, let's say, get an understanding of what their business requirements are. And they are struggling to articulate what their business requirements are, what their business process is, the type of information that they need to go in when talking to prospects or managing clients, customers, deals, whatever it might be. So to leverage any AI for that to basically ask, okay, what are the common or what are the common best practices of a process for, let's say, a, a car dealership when talking to a prospect, like what happens from the first interaction to getting them to test drive the car or getting them into the dealership? Like what are the different pieces of information that I need to capture? What are the different steps in the process that should happen, even though we are not when we're doing that, we're not revealing any confidential sensitive information about the company or project that we are working on. We're asking it to give us a generic starting point to work with. And the way I see it, using AI in that way is so unbelievably powerful and makes you, it allows you to go from knowing zero to looking like a superhero and you can completely acknowledge when someone asks you, like, where the heck did you get this from? How did you pull this off so quickly? You didn't even know that this was a project that we needed to focus on until an hour ago. I don't think there's anything wrong with telling them I got it from ChatGPT. The same way we could say I got it from Google. I wikipedia it. I think it's all the same. And you will still look like a superhero. You're not trying to claim ownership of it. You're like, this is the only thing I got as a starting point. I don't even know if it's helpful. Thoughts? Questions? Um, so by the way, since we were chatting a little bit about the Microsoft version, I know many people have not seen it. So I'm actually, I'm going to switch right over to show you guys real quick. So let's say, so this is it. And let's say I'm in, let's do a Salesforce. Uh, let's do some new announcement, announce product announcements. And let's pick anything that's recent. All right, let's start here. 
And what I'm gonna show you is unlike ChatGPT, here, let's use this one. Unlike ChatGPT that does not have internet access, the Microsoft version basically, it does have internet access and it's leveraging, one way of using it is leveraging the website that you're on at the moment when you're interacting with the AI. So here I am on, this is essentially a press release from May the 4th. And let's say, even though this is a relatively short uh, article, okay, I shouldn't say it's not that short. My eyes are glazed over. I don't have time. I need to get an idea of what's going on over here. So you can see over here on the right-hand side, I've got this side panel and I can just go right here where it says chat and I can go down below and I can do something like, can you summarize the key points in this article or from this article, from this article. And you're going to see that it's going to access the article and it's going to give me a summary. And then you can take it in a lot of other directions. I'm going to show you in a moment. This does not show an author for this article while it's writing because it's a press release. That's why. Okay, fine. So I'm just going to wait for it to finish. Okay, great. Preparing to interview a senior exec at Salesforce about this new product availability. What questions should I ask them for an article that I'm writing? So again, leveraging the context of what's in the main browser window itself. Here we go. It's now going to give us some engaging questions on this particular topic. So you can't really do that with ChatGPT. What you could do with ChatGPT is you would have to cut and paste this article, which might be even too much content for ChatGPT. So you would have to cut and paste segments of the article in order to ask the same questions. Whereas right here, you can do it as you're engaging with that content itself. And by the way, you can see over here, and it did this up above also before I put in this question, it also gives you some suggested follow-up, excuse me, questions or commands for the AI itself, which I think is pretty cool. Questions, thoughts, concerns? That's pretty cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, how it's right there on the page, being able to, yeah, being able to extend that GPT function. That's cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no worries. By the way, I don't know if anyone saw the, since we're on the topic of AI, I don't know if anyone saw the announcements from, I think it was last week, Google made a whole bunch of announcements in terms of new things coming out on the Google platform, including software, or I should say from Google as a company, which includes both software and hardware. So like their devices. And one of the things that they announced, first of all, almost everything that they announced had some, if not major elements of AI built into it, but essentially they announced how their version of AI that they are calling Bard, how by the end of the year, it's going to be integrated into Google Workspace, meaning Gmail, Docs, slide, Slides, and Google Sheets, where essentially from what they showed, what we think is very cool about ChatGPT is freaking primitive compared to what if what Google showed is real stuff, totally primitive because you can go directly in sheets and talking to the AI, they gave an example where you can say something like, I'm preparing to, like for a teenager, let's say I'm preparing to start a business, a dog walking business. Can you create a spreadsheet of the kind of information that I should track for my business? And it created all the columns and it created the different formatting of the different data types that are within each column. And it also gave some sample rows in there, like with color coding and things like that, like some crazy cool stuff. And they showed, for example, in Google Docs and Google Slides, where you can just tell the AI the type of content to put in and it just pops it into the document itself and also creates the corresponding visual images to go along with it. So they showed a demo of having a child's fictional story in Google Docs 
And not only can the AI continue the story, similar to ChatGPT, but it can also create some images to go along with the story. Crazy stuff. David, this is Peter. Yeah. With the Bing, what you showed us on Bing, ChatGPT probably looks at data from before 2021. Is that right? Yeah. Is there anybody who's doing anything beyond that? So like the Bing one, if you pull up that one, Bard. Yeah, so both the um, the Microsoft one as well as the Google one, which I can show you the Google one too. I believe the Google one is current because what it's doing is it's going off of the Google search results. Hang on one second. Let me show you, Bard. Oh, let me share my screen. Window and Bard. So if I go here, let's do something like what, what are the key features that Salesforce will include in the summer 23 release? And let's see what we got. Come on, you can do it. And here we go. Yeah. Look at that. And Which current events, like, like basketball scores, you could take it, build me a table of where the standings are currently, something like that. I'll play with it. But yeah, that's. So you see over here where it shows Google page. it. So this is where, oh, I guess it's only pulling related searches. It's not actually doing the search. But yeah. So it's very different. So again, the, like the stuff that is insanely cool right now about ChatGPT. Like, we don't know what we don't know. <laughs> We're <laughs> way cooler very quickly. Thanks. Mind stuff. Yeah. All right. What else do you guys want to talk about in terms of Salesforce projects, Salesforce career transitions, whether you're starting in the Salesforce career, looking to change something in your career, or projects that you're working on, anything? Here, I want to share another resource, sure. something actually I'd be happy to present. I put together a website that explains Salesforce careers. After our class, I taught be able to help introduce Salesforce careers to people. It gave me the perspective about how hard it is to explain that. Like, what is Salesforce is. and where is Salesforce and who's in Salesforce? So I realized, and this is what I love about teaching also, is being able to synthesize information and so I grouped into the, the stages of ex crawl, walk, run. So crawl, explore, understanding. I, and for exploring, I consider break that down by know your nouns. So you can feel free to share, by the way. You okay. should have. Okay. Return. Okay. Let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to, no pressure. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I have to accommodate for all the different learners. Here I'm just being auditory. Okay. All right, so here, so the website, oh, I'll go full screen for a moment. Okay, so this is the full URL because mm -hmm. I built it out of a sandbox, mm -hmm. but I just bought like for $1, jsunnyz.online is the domain that I purchased, but it's a shortcut then for $1. I didn't even have to build a website. It just goes mm -hmm. right to the org. So this is an introduction about it and also letting people know that it's really not good for mobile because, and here's a question for you about Adoption. I built this using Experience Cloud's Lightning Web Components, which are super easy to do. I didn't need mm -hmm. any HTML, but it's just drag and drop, but it's, it doesn't work well for mobile. I have to figure that out. Because over here, I have this nice layout for desktop, but mobile, it's, it, it rearranges it. Yes. So. And one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in the past couple of years is that the phrase mobile first is more than just a catchphrase from a marketing perspective, it has to be very real because yeah. most people are accessing, think of even any of us within the last 24 hours. Most information that we're accessing from online, most of the time is from a mobile device mm -hmm. more than from a desktop. Yeah, that's a big area that I hope that Salesforce picks up that Slack. <laughs> it's <laughs> ironic that Slack is a mobile one approach to be able to help with mobile accessibility from chatter to slack although chatter is still great if you can integrate those two that'd be wonderful yeah uh, so i'm with you it could be a real challenge and yeah i think it's one of the one of the cringy aspects of experience cloud also even salesforce itself because this is a question that i'm right now just dealing with for a build perspective 
I'm building my own app of journaling, but I like to use my app on my phone because this way I could be able to do voice to text and take a walk and I'll journal and it works great. But the reports don't look well on mobile yeah. and the functions of reports, like if I were to put a link from a record of either having a report chart that then you click to go to the report, it doesn't work. That link, if I have the component, you click view report and it just reloads the page. It doesn't go to the report. So I found out about how to create a button or a link that will go to a, that will go to the report filtered from the record based off of the record ID. So right. you, Okay. So using that, it works on desktop, but on mobile, it doesn't get the record ID. It goes to, it does go to the report, but it just doesn't have, it just doesn't apply that record ID. So it's just showing no record ID applied to the filter. So I don't see any fil records. So that doesn't seem to be working quite well. So actually, um, hang on one second. So what you're talking about, I believe is, hang on, I'm going to try to log oh, in. Here, I can share my screen actually to even show you that. To so let me show you here's my journal app. Again, yeah, I, I talk so much. I'm <laughs> this is why I listen to podcasts. I am an auditory learner, but I'm a visual learner too. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry about it. So this is the journal app under development called just I love it because it's practical and presentable. And so I have my entry. So if I go to an entry page, because if I go to the entry page at the end of the month, what I want to do is I want to be able to see at the end of the month or at the end of the week, end of the quarter. What did I do? I want to, so I enter my goals in and right. reference the goal above. So this is a cool screen flow. But over here, I, so over here, I want to be able to review my goals. So there's a couple ways to do it. Here, I created a chart that like, it's okay. I, the number is cool, but I really, I want to get to the report. And, but this, so doing this on the mobile doesn't go to the report. And so that's where I found out about the... Wait, what app. did you click on a moment ago? Because I looked away for a second. Okay. So I clicked on a report chart component. Yep. Yeah. So I clicked that to go to the report. But then I found out, so I was like, that's not working on mobile. When I click that on mobile, it just reloads the mobile. It okay. So hang on. The, the component that you're on right now on the left-hand side. Yeah. I'm assuming that is dynamically filtered to only show records related to this record? Yes. Okay. And when accessing this from mobile, it's not filtering is what you said? No, it, it does oh, filter. It okay, does okay, filter, okay. But it just doesn't, it doesn't go to that actual report. So it, so the view report button, yeah. so it shows the component well. This chart yeah. looks right. Yeah. But, but the view report button yeah. doesn't actually do anything. You click view report and just reloads the page. It doesn't go to the report. So wow. Think, yeah. Yeah. I found a little glitch in the matrix. Hang on a second. I know nothing about that. Salesforce mobile. View. Technically it should be working unless like they, they do have notes saying it doesn't, but it's like, it's. I'm looking. Okay. Let me see. Maybe I can maybe plug in my screen to show my screen on my phone. Kind to show a, okay. So here I'll stop sharing my screen so I could be, I could show my phone screen a bit bigger. So over here is another chart that I have. Okay, so it's on my phone. If I click the view report button, so you're going to click view report. And it just goes back to the record page. It doesn't go to the report. This is the record of the week. Yeah. So it doesn't actually go to the report. All right. I'm going to, so I'm going to show you you're right. And I learned something new today. One of the reasons why I love doing this kind of work, I'm always learning. So I landed on this page, reports and dashboards, what's different or not available in the Salesforce mobile app. And no, not this one. It's this one. Embedded report charts don't link. Ah, uh, yeah. it is. Official. I did not know that before. Now I was today years old when I learned. Yeah. Okay. So it is official. They do know about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. But then they should have removed the button. So it is a bug. The fact that it is uh, I agree with the that. button there. Uh, because then, so here, I'll share my screen again. Because then if I, it would be cool just to, okay, fine. I'll keep that chart component on the page. Just let's have a good user experience of not having a button that doesn't work. Like we can have the chart on the page. Cool. A chart on the page. That's cool. Just don't misdirect with the button. And then, so what else is maybe, I don't know if they, they consider this a feature or it is a bug. But it, over here, we have a button yeah. of going to a report that will now filter based off of the record ID. So you're right. going to go through views of the report. Right, you're going to have the same URL. thing. 
Yeah. So this this actually I think I like, to get that to work, you would have to open up that page in like Safari on the mobile device. In other words, mm-hmm. not the mobile app. And that's super annoying. And that introduces a whole lot of other problems. Safari, it's not going to be optimized for mobile. Yeah, because it does go to the report, but it right. doesn't bring the UR. It doesn't right. bring the record ID over. Yeah. Salesforce officially dropped support for the URL hacking a long time ago. So here's my workaround. The word hacking shouldn't even be applied to it because that was the only mechanism to accomplish something like this in so, the classic. Okay, so here's my workaround because also reports themselves don't look so great. Like the actual records. On mobile. On mobile. Yeah, no, I love reports. Yeah, I love actual reports. Uh, so going back to this actual report, it's actually a bit better. I like now having the button rather than the chart because the chart, I had to configure the chart differently than I would really want it so that the chart would look right on the record page because how I have it right over here set up like this, I'm able to set it on the report how I want my chart. On the record, It you can't choose what you want to, to group and stack. You can't choose that on the record page. It just does by default what you have is your first group and then your second right. group. So you have to like then, so, but really what I'd want to like, so I separate my prompts by if it's a featured prompt with that at the top and then then group it by the types of prompts uh, or actually group it by goal and then types of prompts. So this is how I'd like to group it and then even have a chart that just says, so I like to be able to see different information in different ways right. to be able to then navigate around. So, so I actually, like- in a way you're actually calling out something else. And what I'm about to say is an observation, not a criticism. Don't Mm. take it as a criticism, which is in the end, Salesforce, it's just a database and you can use it to track anything and everything so long as it could be entered as a database entry and it's available on desktop and mobile devices. Not a big deal. It's very basic. However, there are lots of use cases where even though technically it's possible to use Salesforce to track these pieces of information, there are going to be other factors like some of the things that you mentioned earlier, as well as what you're mentioning now on the usability aspects. Like what is the use case like for the user? Um, I should say plural in theory, could because I realize that you're likely the only user right now, but in theory, it could be users where one person is enter mostly entering the data somebody else is just simply looking at metrics on a regular basis where a lot of times those factors will lean very heavily to not using salesforce for the proposed to solve the proposed business problem or use case that the business ex- is experiencing if it were me i would to and if it were me who wanted to track these things I would not be using Salesforce at all. I would probably lean towards Notion. Notion might not be perfect for this either. I was using Notion at first, Mm -hmm. but what I realized, because at first I I didn't think this is a cool use case for Salesforce, but that wasn't what first came to mind. I came to use Notion because it's, oh yeah, I can have templates in Notion. So I can be able to say, hey, I want to put a new entry in, give me my questions, my prompts. But what I like about Salesforce is I can be able to connect prompts to goals and I can, no, you be can do that anyway. You can do that in Notion. You want me to show you? Yeah. You want me to show you on my side or you want, to, want me to show you hands-on with you in your database? In okay. Your okay. Notion? okay. Yeah, yeah, here. Let me pull up my Notion. Okay. So I'm assuming in Notion, you have one database of goals and another database of prompts. Yeah. But here's the thing also. I want to be yeah. able to have... Okay, so I want to be so I want to be able to have a hierarchy of goals. So I want to uh-huh. be able to have a, like a three year goal, and be able to then have a one year goal that looks up to a three year goal. Oh wait, um, yeah, and and then being able to tag those prompts to the goals, so I could be able to see for a goal how things go. Okay, you currently have a table of goals or no? I I don't know if it's still in. Or if no. not, we can create a fake one. Okay, I can create. Let me go ahead and create it in here. Oh, um, and actually, I'll show you something else. If you're going to create a fake one. If if you have not already used the free Notion AI trial, we can even use the AI to identify for us what fields do we want to capture. So however so, you want to do it. Okay. So what I'd want to do 
yep. it is, here's my user story. I want to be able to uh, have a hierarchy of goals. Yeah, exactly. A hierarchy of goals according to at uh, the three-year mark, a one-year, quarter, month, week, and day that are a hierarchy. So days look okay. up to weeks, weeks look up to months. Do you want to have an unlimited hierarchy or are you just planning on like really two levels? Because it because from what I heard a moment ago, it's like you have this. It one would look up hierarchy. to one parent, but the parent would have a parent. So I guess that's where it'd be a, a linear. My day would look up to a week. Yeah. The week would look up to a monthly goal. And that. Okay. I, first thing is to create a database of goals. So you could either go here or go to a brand new page, whatever you want. I would, you know what, I would suggest that just to keep it clean, start with a brand new yeah. page of a database, and then you can always bring it into this page if you want. Yeah, that's great. And yeah, and you know what, just to keep your own sanity, I would suggest a naming convention or using an yeah. icon to like goals database or goals and add an icon of a, like a database table. Thing. Goals database, yeah. Okay, you can go over here and create a new field. And you're going to choose relation. And we're going uh, to yep, link it to itself. So the first one. And clear out the default name and just call it pairing goal. Mm -hmm. And add relation. Okay, so this way if I put a goal in here, I could be Yeah, and I would change the name. I would just call that goal. The first column that you have on the left. Yeah, I would just change the label just to call it goal. Okay, so now go ahead and create your, the ones that will be the highest level, the, the parent goals. Okay, okay. And then uh, we'll create some child goals and show them with their parent. And if you want, you could just create, uh, if, if you're struggling to think of them right now, I would suggest you could just create fake parent goal one, fake parent goal two, fake parent goal three. Okay, we'll say, okay, some of mine with IT. Uh, Builds for us. Okay, so these aren't great goals and that they're it's not. It's fine, so it's okay. Smart. It's okay right, if you yeah. put totally fictitious, like just not placeholders. That's totally cool. Okay, so now, again, just for simplicity, let's put in fake goal one. And on the right-hand side where it shows parent goal, click into it and type in extend. Let's make believe this is a child of extend my mind. There you go. Mm -hmm. I just... Select it, and then you can move off. And now we can see that we have a parent and child hierarchy. Now, mm -hmm, if you, mm -hmm. and you, you can absolutely keep doing that. Now, at the same time, what you can do is you can then establish additional views where you're looking at them. Maybe you're only looking at the parent goals, or you're looking at all of the parent goals, and then the next column is all of the child goals. Mm -hmm. Or you could look at it as a Kanban where each parent goal is a column and all of the entries in that column are the child goals. I don't know if you know how to create additional views, but by clicking on the plus sign next to table will allow you to, yep, on the left, yep, you can click on that. And uh, so here, click on the right-hand side, click on board. Yeah, and where it says view name, you can call it, just call it Kanban for now. I just hit done. And oh, actually, we shouldn't hit done. We need to group them by clicking where it says layout. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we didn't have to do that. If there was an option for group on the right hand side where it says layout, click the arrow to back out. Or maybe group by. Oh, yeah, right there. Group by, and you want to group it by the parent goal. Ah. Uh. And now just X out the side panel on the right. And where are all the ones that's probably on the right? The one, oh yeah, it's on the left. The ones with no parent goal. You could just drag them over to categorize them. And if you want to make that your default view, you on the tabs on top, you just take that first view, con, the word Kanban, and drag it to the left. And now you can toggle between your list views. I'm not at all trying to, again, I don't want you to think. Oh, so no, 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 I think you're this, is very practical. Yeah, this is very practical. What I love is I think I'm going to still keep building this because like this gives me a use case to play around where it's, it's not anyone's real like business. Right. So that's where like I'll do things to try to break things. Like I'll build stuff that's worse. Not 100%. even a hundred percent. And that's the only way you would have uncovered that yeah. the link to the report chart doesn't work on mobile. And, and and so I found a cool workaround as well. The fact that the even the report itself. Okay, fine. If I do use that link to get here 
and there's no filter. Okay, if I actually just manually put the filter in, looking at the report, it doesn't look that well on mobile. It's like it doesn't do the same groupings. It, right. It has, yeah. So what I found is that using Flow, I can build a report. So this is something I'm playing with right over here. So over here is a Flow to be able to now oh, get wow. those records because oh, I want to be able to get the grandchild record. So I can be able to use that's Flow. That's very cool. Yeah, and you see, that's where, uh, to the point of needing to decide what is the best mechanism to solve for a particular business problem, there are absolutely tons of features available in Salesforce that are not available in Notion. So I'm not at all saying Notion is better than Salesforce. What I'm saying is for certain use yeah. cases, then it might make sense to consider a tool like Notion. But this is very cool. This is great stuff. This is very cool. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Anyone else have anything that... So Steve, I see your question. The tool that was just used is Notion. Notion is a freaking... Hold on, I'm going to show you guys something. Which of the multiple screens that I have open? Actually, I can just put the link to it. If you want to learn Notion, Thomas, Frank, you need to learn it from this guy. I'm happy to teach it to anyone, but uh, I am looking for the link. Okay, I'm going to share a playlist. Hold on a second. Yeah, here's the link. So I'm going to put it in the chat right now. And I'm going to share my screen to show you what it is and who this guy is. So visually, you can make that connection. So this guy basically is the best person to learn Notion from. And actually, let's go back over here for a moment. On the playlist that I gave you a link for, you'll see he's got lots of different videos that are quite extensive. And by the way, when I say extensive, even if he has a video that's only 10 minutes long, I typically have to rewind and rewatch even a single sentence, multiple of what he says multiple times until I fully grasp it because he's just way smarter than what my brain can process at any given point in time. But he's absolutely the best person to learn a uh, notion from. Anyway, we are at the top of the hour, so we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for joining. Our inaugural open office hours for Salesforce admins. And I'll see you all next time. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You bet. Bye-bye.